Hello everyone, Kevin here. Uh, today, I'm just going to give you a look of what it's like to record the Blog Oklahoma podcast. This is an unedited <laughs> view of, of me doing the recording. Now, I'm not showing you me doing the editing. This is just me doing the voice part. I spent about a week writing up the script. It still wasn't perfect, but I went ahead and did the episode anyways. <laughs> And I hope you enjoy it. So here's a look of what it is when I record the Blog Oklahoma podcast. Hello, everyone. Kevin here. Just last year, I did an episode all about impeachment. I told of the time Oklahoma impeached and removed two sitting governors. I briefly went over what it took to impeach a president on a federal level. <laughs> My, how the news catches up with you at times. Let's talk about it. Welcome to Blog Oklahoma. Going to be a windy day today. Hopefully it won't come across on the podcast. We'll see. Hello everyone. Kevin here. Listening to it. Do it again. Good trial. <laughs> All right. Let's try this again. Hello everyone, Kevin here. Just last year I did an episode all about impeachment. I told of the time Oklahoma impeached and removed two sitting governors. I briefly went over what it took to impeach a president on a federal level. My, how the news catches up with you at times. Let's talk about it. Welcome to Bog, Oklahoma. That sounded like Bog, Oklahoma, didn't it? do it again. Sausage making. Woo. <laughs> cat. Got cat hair everywhere. Got to clean again. The cat right over there sitting on the bed. Hopefully he'll behave. All right, let's try again. Hello everyone, Kevin here. Last year I did an episode all about impeachment. I told of the time Oklahoma impeached and removed two sitting governors. I briefly went over what it took to impeach a president on a federal level. <laughs> My, how the news catches up with you at times. Let's talk about it. Welcome to Blog Oklahoma. Okay, that works. Game. Intro. All right. Save the file project. Today is 2009-10-06. This is episode, give it 64. Hello. Save project. There we go. First take done. Yay! All right. Now the hard part. So if you've been anywhere near a news source within the last few weeks, you know that uh, things are getting serious over in Washington, D.C. The U.S. House of Representatives have started a formal impeachment inquiry of President Donald Trump. A quick review of impeachment. First off, impeachment by the House of Representatives is not the removal of from office. It's similar to an indictment in criminal law. Formal charges are brought forth. It does not mean the removal from office. It's the start of the process. The removal is by trial in the Senate. Eh, do that again. I hated how I read that.
So if you've been anywhere near a news source within the last few weeks, you know that things are getting serious in Washington, D.C. The U.S. House of Representatives have started a formal impeachment inquiry of President Donald Trump. A quick review of impeachment. First off, impeachment by the House of Representatives is not the removal from office. It's similar to an indictment in criminal law. Formal charges are brought forth. It does not mean the removal from office. It's the start of the process. The removal is by trial in the Senate. Here's how impeachment is defined in the U.S. Constitution. Now, I'll be quoting some of the phrases here. So in Article 1, that's all about the legislature, Section 2, the House of Representatives shall have the sole power of impeachment. In Section 3, the Senate shall have the sole power to try all impeachments. When sitting for that purpose, they shall be on oath or affirmation. When the President of the United States is tried, the Chief Justice shall... shall Ah! See? The hard part. I'm going to do the whole thing again. Ah, The wind's bothering me. I can hear the wind. You probably can't. It's, from, it's a nice dynamic mic, but uh, it's loud. <laughs> Let's try again. So if you've been anywhere near a news source within the last few weeks, you know that things are getting serious over in Washington, D.C. The U.S. House of Representatives have started a formal impeachment inquiry of President Donald Trump. A quick review of impeachment. First off, impeachment by the House of Representatives is not the removal from office. It's similar to an indictment in criminal law. Formal charges are brought forth. It does not mean the removal from office. It's the start of the process. The removal is by trial in the Senate. Okay, I'm going to save that. Just so I don't have to say it again. Hear how... See, I already messed up. Here's how impeachment is defined by the U.S. Constitution. Now, I'll be quoting some of the uh, clauses here. In Article 1, that's all about the legislator, legislative branch. In Article 1, that's all about the legislative branch. Section 2, the House of Representatives shall have the sole power of impeachment. In Section 3, the Senate shall have the sole power of... uh, This is why I did that one part over. Here's how impeachment is defined by the U.S. Constitution. In Article 1, that's all about the legislative branch, Section 2, the House of Representatives shall have sole power of impeachment. In Section 3, the Senate shall have the sole power to try all impeachments. When sitting for that purpose, they shall be on oath or affirmation. When the President of the United States is tried, the Chief Justice shall provide, and no person shall be convicted without the concurrence of two-thirds of the members present. Judgment in cases of impeachment shall not extend further than to removal from office and disqualification to hold and enjoy any office of honor, trust, or profit under the United States. But the party convicted shall nevertheless be liable and subject to indictment, trial, judgment, and punishment according to law. Now, in Article 2, that's about the executive branch, it's in Section 4, it says, The President, Vice President, and all civil officers of the United States shall be removed from office on impeachment for and conviction of treason, bribery, or other high crimes and misdemeanors. That's it. That's all it says in the U.S. Constitution about impeachment. 
So what's going on uh, right now is just an inquiry. The various House committees are gathering evidence to bring to the full House to vote on impeachment. It only takes a simple majority for impeachment to pass. When it gets to the Senate, there'll be a big old trial. <laughs> evidence will be presented and a defense will be given and a vote of two-thirds must be reached to convict and remove from office. If every senator is present, that means 67 must vote to convict. That's quite a heavy lift. No sitting president has been removed from office by impeachment. So, how did we get here? I'm going to save that. <laughs> it seems there have been calls for impeachment of President Donald Trump almost from the moment he began his term. <laughs> A lot of that was just talk and hyperbole. In my lifetime, I've heard people say that about many presidents or presidential nominees. I can remember talk of impeachment for Richard Nixon, Ronald Reagan, Bill Clinton, George W. Bush, and Barack Obama. Bill Clinton was the only one that it actually happened to, and that was because he lied about getting a blowjob. I'm not joking about that. That's how he got impeached. <laughs> impeachment is a political process. It takes a certain amount of political will to make it happen. Of course, there has to be evidence to back up impeachment, but it's still all politics. In the case of Donald Trump, in the case of President Donald Trump, it's been a near constant stream of scandal after scandal. From political rivals and allies, I might add, of the president, there have been accusations, and I repeat, accusations, of emolument clause violations by profiting off his office, nepotism, racism, sexism, paying off a porn star, repeatedly lying about even the little things, general incompetence, and obstruction of justice to actually working with Russia to swing a U.S. election. Again, that's just the accusations. All of that would bring one's political revival, rivals. Uh, all of that would bring one's political rivals to bid for a case of impeachment. So, what was the actual last straw? A phone call. I'm gonna do it again. Doing it again. Where was I? It seems there have been calls for impeachment of President Donald Trump almost from the moment he began his term. A lot of that is just talk and hyperbole. It, you know, in my lifetime... It seems there have been calls for impeachment... There's a the in there. It seems there have been calls for impeach. I did it again. It seems there have been calls for the impeachment of President Donald Trump almost from the moment he began his term. A lot of that was just talk and hyperbole. In my lifetime, I've heard people say that about many presidents or presidential nominees. I can remember talk of impeachment for in, uh, Richard Nixon, Ronald Reagan, Bill Clinton, George W. Bush, and Barack Obama. Bill Clinton was the only one that it actually happened to, and that was because he lied about getting a blowjob. I'm not joking about that. That's what they impeached him for. <laughs> impeachment is a political process. It takes a certain amount of political will to make it happen. Of course, there has to be evidence to back up impeachment, but it's still all politics. In the case of President Donald Trump, 
it's been a near constant stream of scandal after scandal. From political rivals and allies, I might add, of the president, there have been accusations, I repeat, accusations, of emoluments clause violations by profiting off his office, nepotism, racism, sexism, paying off a porn star, repeatedly lying about even the little things, general incompetence, and obstruction of justice to actually working with Russia to swing a U.S. election. Again, that's just the accusations. All of that would bring one's political rivals to bid for a case of impeachment. So what was the actual last straw? A phone call. In August, a whistleblower filed a report with the Inspector General for National Intelligence regarding a call by President Trump to Ukraine President Zelensky and the handling of that call afterwards. In this call, President Trump repeatedly tried to get the president of Ukraine to open an investigation into former vice president and now political candidate George... Uh, George. Ugh. Oh, this is what I got to put up with. George, George, where did that come from? Uh, I'm going to save that. Eh, I'll do it again. It seems there have been calls for the impeachment of President Donald Trump almost from the moment he began his term. A lot of that was just talk and hyperbole. In my lifetime, I've heard... Pro it seems there have been calls for the impeachment of President Donald Trump almost from the moment he began... It seems... I did say that. Uh. <sighs> it's been a long weekend. It wasn't easy to write. <laughs> it seems there have been calls for the impeachment of President Donald Trump almost from the moment he began his term. A lot of that was just talk and hyperbole. In my lifetime, I've heard people say that about many presidents or presidential nominees. I can remember talk of impeachment for Richard Nixon, when I was a very young kid then, <laughs> of President Ronald Reagan, Bill Clinton, George W. Bush, and Barack Obama. Bill Clinton was the only one that it actually happened to, and that was because he lied about getting a blowjob. I'm not joking about that. That's what they impeached him on. Hmm. Impeachment is a political process. It takes a certain amount of political will to make it happen. Of course, there has to be evidence to back up impeachment, but it's still all politics. In the case of President Donald Trump, it's been a near constant stream of scandal after scandal. From political rivals and allies, I might add, of the president, there have been accusations, I repeat, accusations, of emolument clause violations by profiting off his office, nepotism, racism, sexism, paying off porn stars, repeatedly lying about even the little things, general incompetence, and obstruction of justice, to actually working with Russia to swing a U.S. election. Again, that's just the accusations. All of that would bring one's political rivals to bid for a case of impeachment. So, what was the last straw? A phone call. In August, a whistleblower filed a report with the Inspector General for the National Intelligence... Save. Name that one. Topic three... In August, a whistleblower filed a report with the Inspector General for National Intelligence regarding a call by President Trump to Ukrainian President Zelensky 
and the handling of that call afterward. In this call, President Trump repeatedly tried to get the president of Ukraine to open an investigation into former vice president and now political rival and presidential candidate Joe Biden and his son Hunter Hunter Biden. Uh, damn it. I just twisted my tongue up in that. In August, a whistleblower filed a report with the Inspector General for National Intelligence regarding a call by President Trump to Ukrainian President Zelensky and a handling of that call afterward. In this call, President Trump repeatedly tried to get the Ukrainian president to open an investigation into former vice president and now presidential candidate Joe Biden and his son Hunter Biden all while keeping funds for Ukraine on hold in what appears to be a quid pro quo. Basically, if you do this for me, I'll give you the funds. After this call took place, the staff took the records of this call and placed them in a classified database in what appears to be a cover-up. After more information and news about this came out, more and more people agreed it was time to begin impeachment. So on September 24th, Speaker of the House Nancy Pelosi announced a formal impeachment inquiry of the president. Hey, if it's good take, I'm going to save it. <laughs> Since then, it's been a steady flow of discovery after discovery of who was involved and what did they know. Implicated so far as the time I'm recording this, it's been the president himself, his personal attorney, Rudy Giuliani, Secretary of State, Mong Peng... Mm. Mm. Mike Pompeo, Mike Pompeo. Well, at least I'm not doing hockey players. Ooh, that would be hard. <laughs> All right, here we go. Since then, it's been a steady flow of discovery after discovery of who was involved and what did they know. Implicated so far has been the president himself, his personal attorney, Rudy Giuliani, Secretary of State, Mark, 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 good old Mark. Mm. Uh. Since then, it's been a steady flow of discovery after discovery of who was involved and what did they know. Implicated so far has been the president himself, his personal attorney, Rudy Giuliani, Secretary of State Mike Pompeo, Attorney General William Barr, and just recently, the Vice President Mike Pence, and many more government officials. Now, I've just given you the broad strokes of what's going on. More news is dropping as I'm writing this <laughs> and recording this. Um, it's almost as hard. It's, it, oh. Now, I've just given you the broad strokes of what's going on. More news is dropping as I'm recording this. It's almost hard to keep up. I delayed this episode a week just so I could get caught up with it. In the show notes, I'll be providing links to as much information as I can find and encourage you to look through it. Right now, it's just an inquiry, an investigation. Impeachment might not even reach the House floor, but it likely will, and soon. For the next few months, political tensions will rise. Lines are being drawn and sides taken. If what I heard on the Sunday talk shows is any indication, it's going to be a fun time in the land of politics. <laughs> well, let's do it again. I don't know where I started that one. Where did I start that one? So on September 24th, the Speaker of the House, Nancy Pelosi, announced a formal inquiry of the President. 
Okay. Since then, it's been a steady flow of discovery after discovery of who was involved and what did they know. Implicated so far has been the president himself, his personal attorney, Rudy Giuliani, Secretary of State Mike Pompeo, Attorney General William Barr, and just recently, Vice President Mike Pence, and many more government officials. Now, I've just given you the broad strokes of what's going on. More news is dropping as I'm recording this. It's almost hard to keep up. In fact, I delayed this episode a week just so I could get caught up. In the show notes, I'll be providing links to as much information as I can find, and I would encourage you to go look through it. Right now, it's just an inquiry, an investigation. Impeachment might not even reach the House floor, but it likely will, (laughs) and soon. For the next few months, political tensions will rise. Lines are being drawn and sides taken. If what I heard on the Sunday talk shows are any indication, it's going to be a fun time in the land of politics. If impeachment happens, I'll definitely be doing another episode about this. Again, I encourage everyone to read up on what's going on and to make up your own mind about it. Again, I'll have links to all of this and more in the show notes at blogoklahoma.net. Yay! Oh, I recorded that. <laughs> I didn't stop it in time. Okay. Oh, what was that? Six. Okay, now I'm going to edit that together. I still got to do an outro and stuff. Uh, but I'm going to pause the recording of the video here so I can do the editing because I'm just going to sit here quietly doing the editing. Back in a little while. Back to recording. Record a little bloggy here. I'm going to do my ads and the exit. I hope everyone is doing well on this windy October day. (laughs) Hopefully the wind noise isn't bothering this recording too much. It is really loud out there. (laughs) I hope you got something out of this episode, or at least now have an idea of what's going on in D.C. right now. Uh, When it comes to doing these political episodes, I try to keep my opinion out of it and just give you the facts. I have plenty of other sources where I express my opinion on politics, and I'm fairly open about it. However, when it comes to this impeachment inquiry, I'm in full agreement with you. There should be an investigation. In fact, it's the legislative branch's job to check the executive, and that's what they're doing. If you want to know more about my thoughts on Donald Trump and politics in general, just follow me on Mastodon. I have links in the show notes. Um, In other things, I hope to get back into a weekly schedule again. Please bear with me as I attempt this. I will be doing some little bonus episodes from time to time, so hopefully you'll enjoy those. And, uh, well, that's about it for now. I hope you have a great week, and I will talk to you soon. There we go. Now to do the ad. I need to pull up a script. I don't have a script open. Scripts! Where's my scripts? I didn't put this in a script, so. (laughs) Uh, Okay, here comes an ad. Did you know we have our own cafe press store? There you could purchase a t-shirt, coffee mug, and other great items with the Blog Oklahoma podcast artwork on them. So please on, head on over to cafepress.com slash, oh, aw, I haven't done it in a while. Now I screwed it up. Did you know we have our own Cafe Press store? There you could purchase a t-shirt, coffee mug, and other great items with the Blog Oklahoma podcast artwork on them. So please head on over to cafepress.com slash blogoklahomapodcast.
Are you someone who blogs in or about Oklahoma? Then you already qualify for WebRing membership. Join Blog Oklahoma today. Want to know more about Blog Oklahoma? Then just explore the WebRing and discover some of the best blogs and podcasts in the nation. Just visit blogoklahoma.com for more information. Your feedback is important, so please feel free to contact me with your comments or questions. You can get hold of me in a multitude of ways. Just visit blogoklahoma.net slash contact for more. i got to redo the outro. Oh, yes, I am dropping the Blog Oklahoma account from the podcast. Blog Oklahoma isn't growing that much, and I don't want to keep repeating myself episode after episode. So I'm just going to drop that part. Still going to advertise Blog Oklahoma, though. <laughs> your feedback is important, so please feel free to contact me with your comments or questions. You can get old mold. Your feedback is important, so please feel free to contact me with your comments or questions. You can get a hold of me in a multitude of ways. Just visit blogoklahoma.net slash contact for more information. Check our show notes for all the links and bonus material from today's episode. This has been Kevin Latham on October 6th, 2019. For, I screwed that up. Damn. I am too far away from the mic. Come here. <laughs> Your feedback is important, so please feel free to contact me with your comments or questions. You can get hold of me in a multitude of ways. Just visit blogoklahoma.net slash contact for more information. Check our show notes for all the links and bonus material from today's episode. This has been Kevin Latham for Blog Oklahoma. Until next time. All right, that'll do it. That's it for this episode. 